All right, good evening, everyone. I'd ask that you please rise as we welcome Pastor Tim Malter from Calvary Chapel to lead us in the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping this town safe from the recent thunderstorms. We ask for your continued protection. God, we ask you to help our city's leaders uh, to keep learning and listening as representatives of this community. God, we ask for wisdom with all the city projects going on and the, the future goals. We thank you and pray for the city staff as they work diligently and hard to provide assistance and services that build and improve our community. We pray for unity and how we can best work together to improve our community. We pray for financial resources and humility to be good stewards of taxpayers' money. We ask for wisdom and courage to know and to do what is right, good, and true. As Solomon governed over the city of Jerusalem and could have asked for anything, we too, like him, ask for wisdom to govern and enrich lives in Fergus Falls. May we learn to speak respectfully to each other, but we also know when to listen patiently. God, we ask that our city would always be guided by all that we hold to be true, honorable, right, and pure. We pray for families to flourish here, that they would make Fergus Falls their home and get involved in their community. God, we ask that, that you'd help each person here to wisely evaluate their options before them tonight, help them to consider the pros and cons. We ask, God, that you would guide this meeting so that the best possible decisions and outcomes would be accomplished. God, we thank you for our civil and religious liberty, for our local government instituted for the security, benefit, and protection of each person in Fergus Falls. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for our eternal liberty and for Jesus who came to rescue us, who loves us, died for our sins, was buried and rose from the dead. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. It's... 5.30 on its May 16th, 2022, and we'll call this meeting of the Fergus Falls City Council to order. <coughs> Roll call, please. Here. 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 We have a quorum. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, and I'll call on our city administrator, Andrew Bremseth, for any additions or corrections to that agenda. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Council members, good evening. We do have two items to add this evening under the consent agenda, both relating to the Fergus Falls Municipal Airport. Uh, the first being a resolution accepting plans and specifications and authorized to advertise for bids for the airport fuel system replacement project, and that uh, memo is on your desk this evening. And then the second item to add is a resolution accepting plans and specifications and authorization to solicit quotes for the airport automated weather observation system relocation and replacement project. I don't expect you to capture all of that, um, but that memo is on your desk this evening as well. All right. With those additions, I hope you can approve the agenda with a motion. So moved. Thank you, Jim. One second. Thank you, Krista. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Uh, there are no public hearings this evening under awarding of bids. Uh, first item, we have a resolution awarding the bid for construction services for the contract for PI 5344, which is the 2022 seal coat project. And we will call on our city engineer, Brian Yavaro. Good evening, Brian. Thank you. Good evening, Your Honor, members of the council. Yes, on Tuesday, May 10th, we opened bids for the 2022 seal code project. Aztec Corp uh, submitted the one and only bid in the amount of $108,612.09. Uh, the est engineer's estimate was about $105,600 for this project. Uh, therefore, I'm requesting to add this bid. I just want to note uh, there's also markings with this pro project as well. Uh, once the process is done, uh, new symbols and striping will be reinstalled accordingly. It's scheduled this work will be completed September 15th, 2022. Uh, we're estimating the total project cost that includes engineering staff, time, contingencies, and street sweeping at about $126,700. Uh, we budget $142,560, uh, 2022 budget levy funds. Uh, therefore, sufficient funds are, are allowed. So, um, therefore, I'm just requesting ex award the construction services contract to Aztec Corp in the amount of $108,612.09. Thank you, Brian. We can do that. With a resolution. Off that, Your Honor. 
Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Second. Brent. Any questions for our city engineer? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution <coughs> is approved. Item number two is a discussion on the downtown riverfront improvement phase two, and we will call on our city administrator, Andrew Bremseth. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Council members, uh, after our robust discussion last Wednesday, which I appreciate, um, the project management team has had the opportunity to discuss um, the downtown project further. And since that time, we've been able to build funding sources and uses for a couple of different scenarios. And um, Kent Lawaji with Bolton and Mink is going to walk us through some of those scenarios. But uh, the first two will look familiar to you. Um, I'll focus a little bit here on the fourth option, which, um, as we discussed with the project management team, feels like a compromise option. Um, it's, it's an option that allows the city council to bid out this project, um, having a fairly basic base bid with a lot of alternates, which would give kind of an a la carte style option for the council to consider. Um, so they could craft a project that would fit whatever budget um, necessary and whatever uh, project they feel most beneficial for the community. Um, Kent, if you would walk us through the memo you prepared, which highlights these uh, three options. The fourth one here, I know, was passed out to the council just today. This is a fairly new option. And then uh, Bill can walk us through the, the funding sources and uses that we have prepared for all of these four options. And then we're hoping to get some direction from the council this evening, um, not only on, on where we go from here, but also um, if we're not going to award the bid that's on the table, we should reject that bid um, from Comstock. So Kent, if you want to just start walking us through, I think that's a good place to start the discussion. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so uh, just as a refresher, the bid that was received for the downtown riverfront project obviously had a splash pad and it had a bathroom that is required to go along with the splash pad uh concrete walking spaces and plaza kind of gathering areas uh sidewalk along the riverbank uh retaining walls that were necessary due to the, the terrain of the site um let's see site utilities parking lot reconstruction landscaping and site furnishings that would go uh kind of throughout the site and the ad alternates that were included in the bid were foundations for art, tables for public seating, vendor hookups, uh, so sewer, water, electric utilities for those, um, conduit for potentially future installation of an EV charging station, site irrigation for um, landscaping, string lights, and uh, potentially rerouting the sewer from the river in. So all of those were included in the bid that was received uh, late April. Uh, the proposed bridge over the river was not part of that bid package. So, as Andrew mentioned, based on the committee of the whole meeting and subsequent discussion, we have kind of elaborated a little more on potential options that the city could look at moving forward. Um, so the costs that we're showing here are total estimated project costs. So that's estimated construction costs based on uh, the bid prices that were received in April. Um, we have a 10% construction contingency built in there to just sort of flesh out the overall project budget. We've got design fees, we've got preliminary design fees, design fees of phase two, um, construction administration, construction testing, uh, a placeholder for city engineering costs, as well as permitting fees. So all of that stuff is bundled together into uh, the costs that we have shown in the memo here. So option one would be to award the project as bid. That's estimated at about six million five hundred sixty-two thousand. Option two, we talked about last Wednesday, uh, which would be reduce the scope significantly, where you can kind of shelve um, the splash pad and some of the main components of the site, and just build the sidewalk along the riverbank uh, to the proposed bridge location. Uh, that was estimated at about one point five million. That does not include any lighting or parking lot improvements if we add those in uh, as they were included in the original bid it'd be about a 2.3 million dollar project option three would be potentially uh, building the site as bid uh, with the change of narrowing up the sidewalk that runs along the riverbank um, that currently functions for two things it uh, connects users to the 
proposed bridge location and it also acts as an ADA accessible path uh, from the lower level of the splash pad uh, back up to kind of the main level. So you could potentially, if, if the bridge were eliminated from the discussion, you could potentially narrow that path up and shave some costs that way. Uh, but the total estimated cost for that is very similar uh, to option one at about 6.5 million. When Andrew was talking about um, option four is <coughs> handout that I placed on your desk just before the meeting started. So what we're looking at there is potentially reducing the size of the splash pad to a, oh, I suppose about a 30% reduction, 40% reduction. Um, which would change the splash pad so that it's uh, lower on the side. So the, that thick black line that's kind of cutting across the center would be a retaining wall. So you'd have kind of your plaza gathering spaces up by the parking lot, the pink and gray shaded areas. You'd have that retaining wall kind of cutting through the center of the site. And your splash pad would be on the bottom half, on the lower end of that retaining wall. Um, which would allow us to eliminate a significant amount of retaining wall from the project scope. Um, this concept also eliminates the, uh, the river feature uh, that was included in the bid. So that there's some potential cost savings uh, going that route as well. Um, and kind of reworking out the paths and the connectivity uh, from there back up to kind of the main plaza area. So, that's a potential scope reduction um, that could be accomplished here. And uh, we estimate that the cost savings of proceeding along those lines may be about, you could potentially reduce the total project costs, uh, about a million dollars is kind of where just big picture numbers right now. Uh, if this is something that the city wanted to pursue, uh, as Andrew mentioned, we could have kind of a base bid option with a lot of uh, bid alternates so the city could choose a project ultimately based on the bid results that fits um, the budget. So if, if the city did proceed along these lines, that is something, or even option two even, that is something that you would need to, we would need to redesign, advertise for bids again, open bids, <coughs> that kind of thing. So. We anticipate if we went along that route, um, we could be opening bids in July, which would dovetail with uh, any bridge discussion that's yet to happen as well. We anticipate by that time, uh, we should have a better understanding of what um, what direction the bridge discussion is heading and uh, could proceed accordingly based on uh, how the bid results come in and where the council chooses to proceed from there. That's it. Thanks, Ken. So, could you just elaborate a little bit on um, the the kind of the a la carte style, like to give the council the, the like based on the conversations that we had on Wednesday morning, the different concerns, the different you know, thoughts related to the project, how that could be accomplished to, to ultimately get bids back, so that the council has the opportunity to make a informed decision, if you will, with all of that information. Absolutely. So I think probably the best way to approach this would be to the base bid would likely be uh, alternate to, which would be kind of just the trail um, from Court Street towards where the bridge is planned to go. That would be your base bid. And then you would have an alternate for the splash pad, perhaps an alternate for the river feature along the side of the splash pad. Um, the restroom, if you have a splash pad, a restroom is required, but you would still, we could still add those as alternates separately just so you can identify those costs. Um, we could potentially scope down uh, some of the sidewalk, even the trail along Riverbank that could be scoped down as as a deduct, you know, if, if rather than a 14 foot wide concrete trail along the Riverbank, perhaps it could only be 10, you know, and there could be a deduct included in the bid that way. So there's ways to sort of break this up into a lot of alternates so that you should be able to uh, select those that, that fit where you want to go with the total project. So just one last question for me, and I want to hear the thoughts of the council about, so, what, so if I'm understanding correct, so there's a way to bid option four, 
that could use ba the option two as the base bed, a reduced scope for all of the other features, if you will, mm -hmm. but then also a deduct. So option three would still be on the table if the council at some at some point decided that or when the, when the bids come back, not to go down the road of the depending on what the information from the local manufacturer was working on the design of the bridge. It's a it's a way to basically bid that with the options of option two or three mm -hmm. is is what you're saying. Yeah. You could redo a deduct on the on the bid to accomplish three, two or three, basically, yeah. options two or three. Yeah, it'd be a version of three where the overall scope is less. So it's all. But, so the, but the trail along the river would be lessened as well. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Option two. Does that include all the infrastructure underneath for future phase three? Yes. So yes. So basically, we if we went with that one. If in the future either us or a future council decided to continue on with this, the infrastructure would be down below. Correct. All the infrastructure would be installed underneath the trail, so you're not doing that rework. Correct. Would is it safe to say that option two, like Brent's saying, has that infrastructure, but option four would also give you that option, but also then if you wanted to add on, depending on how the bids came in, with any of the additional features, such as a reduced scope spl splash, is that the, that's the benefit of four. Yeah. Right. You you you're allowing yourself the flexibility to do two, three, or any configuration of features that come back that the council feels like would be acceptable. Is it, am I understanding yeah, that right? That's that's the intent of what we're talking about. Yes. Yep. Justin, I would maybe just echo. I think um, you know option one obviously is move forward. We got the bids back. They weren't as favorable as we all hoped. I think option four allows us the freedom to do a base but then have the complete flexibility to make decisions based on pricing. Um, to your point, it also gives future counsel or future action on the site. And it also <clears throat> allows the local manufacturer to design and get something to us for the bridge, which we may need to modify or plan depending on how that conversation goes later this year. So I, I would be in favor of option four, so we at least have some numbers so we can make an informed and an educated decision as a council um, for our community. That'd be my, that's what I would support. Scott? Uh, could you clarify this? None of two, three, or four options that have been presented include any bridge. Is that correct? None of these include a bridge, correct. So the only option that we saw was the first one. That included the bridge. But then since then, these other two, three, and four, they don't Number have. Number one did not include oh, a bridge. That didn't include a bridge either. Right. No, okay. the Can I just give me a clarifying point? The way I understand it, it, it allows the continued time frame for the local manufacturer to bring us back the information so the council can make the decision on the bridge. So it's not saying that the bridge is not included. It's not saying the bridge is included. It's saying we're going to get the information back from the local manufacturer so the council can make that decision when all the information is actually in front of us. Is that accurate? Yeah. And in the sources and uses schedule, I did include the bridge on option two because option two was just a trail coming down there and then a bridge to connect to the trail on the south side. So here it's put in the sources and uses that we'll look at, but yeah, not in in your specific construction sure. because it hasn't been designed yet. Can I just ask a point? When you say infrastructure is included, I mean, can you be like a, a little bit more specific about because in option two, you said infrastructure is there. So does that mean that like the water and the sewer and everything is going to be put in, installed? But yeah, not. so similar to what we talked about last week, what option two would include, you know, extending the sewer far enough underneath the trail and behind the trail so that you could hook up to it and continue the build on the site right. without having to dig up the trail to do that. Same with the water, storm sewer. I mean, ultimately, I think option four, I mean, I kind of, I think I like this one. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, ultimately, I think it's, I, you know, my feeling is we started it, and now we, we, if we stop, we, we've got half a project. And, you know, I mean, we, you know, we, we, we talk about the fact, 
you know, and and obviously I premise this by everybody knows my feelings on this, but um, I also think that you know we're we're now going to try to like make this thing work, and it's going to look ugly. And you know, if you're a resident and you're and you're paying for the marketplace portion, and then we don't finish it, then I think we've got to find a way to, to finish this, and and uh, you know. We don't necessarily need the bridge at this time, and but I think the splash pad is important to the community. And um, you know, I know a lot of businesses were looking forward to this this portion more than the other portion, you know, because this they feel will draw families downtown, and and that was the whole purpose of this project was to encourage people to come downtown, um, and. Uh, I think we have to just figure out a way, and and, and I think we're going to have to go and shake some street trees and and find find some money, because obviously you know uh, when Bill gets to his portion, obviously we can talk about dollars and cents, but it you know reality is it's three million dollars that we need. I think we can find it, um, but it's not going to be easy. But I just think that we can't stop now. Because it looks, it, it's going to look worse. I mean, if we were going to stop, we should have stopped a long time ago. But I don't think we can stop now. I appreciate your can-do attitude. Yep, I think I think we can find three million dollars. Absolutely. This this community has come together on on times of crisis before, and I, I think you know this is a time of crisis. So I, I think if we have a positive attitude, we we can find three million dollars without burdening the taxpayer. Thanks, Anthony. I think that's important. Someone like, it sounds, yeah, Tom? I will uh, offer the, uh, I don't know, motion resolution for, to go ahead with option four, and then I have some comments. A lot of the preparation of plans and specs, and I think we also need to include in there to reject the bid, uh, the original bid, or do we do that separately, or? We should, we should take some formal action on that. We'll take, take care of this first. Let's go separately. Let's yeah. Go. Okay. okay. So there's a resolution to go forward with the plans and uh, designing and authorizing the plans and specs for option four to bring us back. We're not making any decisions at this point. We're going to allowing them to go out for bids to come back so we have the options for option four. That leaves everything on the table. Is that accurate? Everyone understand? Mm -hmm. uh, Scott? We'll second that and then a comment. Please. Please. Yeah. Is there a scenario where this option four could come together and we could still see some construction this year? Yeah. Time frame wise, are your expectations such that we'd be able to get through this process and, and see some construction yet this year? Construction yet this year, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, I think we could have bid results in hand in July. Um, I, would, I would also recommend that, and perhaps I didn't touch on this earlier, um, if we rebid this, we should open up the completion date to occur sometime in 2023. Because I think requiring completion to occur in 22 is going to get you uh, high bid results. Um, so I guess the way I was thinking this would be packaged would be that if the contractor wants to start in 22, start construction in 22, by all means, go for it but we wouldn't require anything to occur until sometime in 23. I apologize, I didn't mention that earlier. Yes. No problem. Again, it's just more flexibility to hopefully get a lower price. The intent being better bid results, yes. Tom? Yeah, it doesn't happen very often, but I completely agree, agree with Council Member Hicks. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, you know, we, we started this this project and, and the, the costs got out of control and there's nothing we can do about that, but that doesn't mean that we have to throw our hands up and quit. And then I'll just take this opportunity to, you know, remind the folks at home and, and my colleagues, uh, you know, and everyone here that, I mean, Fergus Falls can have nice things. Uh, there's, there's no reason we can't have nice things. I think we... Uh, sometimes folks get into this mindset of, nope, we got to scrimp and save every single nickel and dime and, and only use it for, um, you know, roads and, 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 you know, and we've got a plan in place to take care of the things that need to be taken care of. And um, we can make our city a better place. And this is, and it's, it's okay to spend, you know, to make some investments in our future in order to do that. So um, 
it's okay to have nice things. We can do it. And like Anthony said, um, you know, it's it, it might be difficult, but um, you know, things that are worth it usually are. So, thanks, Tom. So we have a resolution, a second. Any further comments before we call for the roll? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution is approved. And then just to tidy up business, I think officially someone off would like would someone offer a resolution rejecting the bid that we received. Is that I can make that, Your Honor. Anthony, thank you, Caroline. Roll call. We're just Caroline. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Thank you, Kent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is a proclamation. Your Honor, I'd still like to hear Bill go through mm -hmm. the funding part. Oh, sorry. Me. Sorry. Did not do it. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. All right. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, we have on the screen as well as what was put on your desk for sources and uses, schedules for each um, option that was brought up. And we'll see if I can page up and down with this. Do I have to turn this on? Got it. All right. So the first one is phase one. So we're going to back up just a, a step. This sources and uses is for the west block. So the market structure, plaza area. And um, you can see on here we have our state bonding that we were awarded of $1.75 million. And then we were also awarded $600,000 from the LCCMR funds of the state grant. And we're applying all that to um, phase one of this project. We're using um, some general MSA dollars towards the parking lot. Uh, WCI, West Central Initiative, gave us a grant for $5,000. Private fundraising between both of these so far has been at 300000 so we just split that down the middle. 150 to each side. Um, and then we have transferred, um, or Rotary there um, committed 50000 for the market structure. The liquor store, we transferred 400000 from there. ARPA funds, that's the American Rescue Plan Act funds, 245000 Then we have water and sewer for vendor uh, utility hookups, storm water, I know some rain garden and some other um, storm water management there for 42. And then we issued bonds for 1.4, just about 1.5 million. That's our funding sources and then broke down um, the various um, costs then related the Comstock contract for just over $4 million, the West Block uh, administration, 614, city engineering, our bond issue costs, um, charge some of our lobbyist time to this project that helps us get that 1.75 million. And then just a few other small other costs that uh, I combined there for total project costs of 4.79 uh, million. So we're coming in under budget on phase one at about $113,000. So glad to say under budget on that one. So, so that is good. Okay, let's see if I... Okay, now getting into the phase two options that we were just talking about. So here is phase two, option one. This is doing everything. So in addition to everything that was in the memo, we put the bridge in here at 857000 That was the prefab bridge because we wanted to show you if you were doing everything, here's what those costs would be. So $7.418 million. The various funding sources we... Um, are looking for a million dollars. We hope that gets awarded through the state. It is looking good on that of state bonding. The Vadim Trust for 700000 Again, some municipal state aid there for the parking lot of 163. There's the other half of the fundraising of 150. 80000 from Rotary for the splash pad. And then sewer, water, and storm water for their individual parts of those utilities and infrastructure that we talked about. 
um, ARPA funds, then I would propose using the balance of those American Rescue Plan funds towards here of 713, would leave bonding of $4.3 million on this one. Uh, you did just reject this bid, so that was option one. We're not doing that. <laughs> and we're stressing that. We're not, we rejected these bids, so. Option two, if you did um, just the trail, and we put the bridge in this one as well, because if you're doing just the trail, then you would bring the bridge down to connect to the trail on this side, so then you can continue to go east or west on the trail on the south side. That would have been the rationale for putting the bridge if you just had the trail coming through. So you have reduced costs for that, of course, coming down to the 3.2 just about, again, with the bridge in there. State bonds are still in there. The Vadim funds are still in there because we're talking about the bridge on this scenario. They've been very passionate about the bridge um, when looking at that. General MSA, again, is still in there. The private fundraising is still in there. There is less sewer water and storm water infrastructure required if you're just doing the trail and the bridge on this one, still using the ARPA funds of 713, leaving a need of 300 and 94,000, I'm going to verify when I look closer to with contacts and I don't see quite as good that direction. 300, yep, 394,000. I put it under the geo bond line. We probably wouldn't bond for 395. We'd probably do an interfund loan or something <laughs> or, or fund it elsewhere um, within the city. So, but that would be the gap that we would need for that. Okay, option three then is if you do the splash pad and the trail, but no bridge. So kind of shrinking up the trail, making it a little uh, um, narrower and not quite as long. You come down to a plaza at the bottom of it. Um, then you have that full splash pad area not reduced um, in this one. You can see this is where Kent was saying that this is very similar to option one because we're basically doing all the same infrastructure for the splash pad. Um, same funding sources in here, but I don't have Vadim in this one because this does not include the bridge. We don't, you know, we don't have verification that they would still be in for the full amount of 700000 So that's why I removed it here, wanted to give you the worst case scenario. You'd be looking at bonding of $4.148 million on that one. Question, Bill. Yes. On, on that bond, does that run for... 15 years or how many years did they make? You would make the choice of that as a council. Do you want to go 15 or 20? And we'd build that okay. out accordingly. This would be the principal needed in any bond issue on this. Of course, when you pay it back over 15 or 20 years, you'd be making principal and interest payments on that. So this is just the principal that we need to issue to fund the project. Do you have any idea how much a year we would have to pay on that? You know, when I was just sitting over here, don't hold me to these numbers, but I started thinking, okay, what would a bond like you're, this? You're awfully close most of the time. Well, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> this is literally a chicken scratch on the side of my paper, but you know, on this bond here, could it be maybe 320 to 350,000 a year, potentially? I'm basing that on what we bonded on the first one, we're levying 113,000, I believe, in this year for that bond. Now, interest rates have gone up as well. Um, we got, you know, we're yep. seeing that elevating, so they would be higher. So, I just kind of did a quick proportion. Just a quick point: these numbers are based on the bids we received that we rejected tonight, too. Correct. These are not Good based point. on the yep. compromise, no, the new, the reduced scope. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. Just yep. make, make sure people understand that. So again, don't put any faith in that number. We'd have to run that yep. in deeper detail. I'm gonna get this little keyboard to wake back up. Okay, down to an option number four. This is if you were all in with, you know, looking at that a la carte style, but if we were all in with all of those uh, looking at that, a project cost of maybe five and a half million dollars. What we did is we took option number two, to just the trail, um, this does not have a bridge in this scenario because we just took that trail portion that Kent had estimated. We added then 3.162 
for the whole splash pad area at a reduced level, bringing it to a $5.5 million project. Same funding sources. I don't have the dean in this one either. I want to point that out. We'd have to look at that further because, again, there's no bridge in this scenario. Um, not to say they wouldn't be in for some amount, um, but I don't know that, so I didn't put it on here. Same other funding sources would come up to bonds of 3126000 And you know, could that be somewhere $250,000 a year in a levy? I don't, if we were just doing that. But I certainly liked what Anthony brought up of shake some trees and see whatever um, good amounts of fundraising could be done to close that gap. But at least this shows you um, the need on that one. So those are the the four options plus where we're at with the uh, phase one so thank you bill Thanks, yep all right moving along under petitions and communications we're happy to make a proclamation for national public works week uh, resilient ready and resilient is the theme of this year's national public works campaign. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, emergency management, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and the public health, high quality of life, and the well-being of the people of Fergus Falls, whereas these infrastructures, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are federally mandated first responders and the engineers, managers, and employees at all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. And whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and the children in Fergus Falls to gain knowledge and maintain ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works first responders and public works programs in their respective communities. And whereas the year 2022 marks the 62nd annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association, now be it resolved that I, Ben Shire, Mayor of the City of Fergus Falls, do hereby designate the week of May 15th through the 21st as National Public Works Week and I urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. This is done at the Fergus Falls City Council meeting on the 16th day of May, 2022. Guy, thank you to you and all of the staff and public works to keep the water running, the streets plowed, and thanks for all you do. Got a good team. Thank you. We have a very good team, and we got a good team leader. Thanks, guy. Speech. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Under the consent agenda, there are nine items, I believe, with the addition of the two related to the airport that Anthony added. At, or I'm sorry, Andrew added at the beginning of the meeting. If anyone would like to discuss any of those individually, we will. Remove them, yes. I, item seven, uh, the grant application for Minnesota State Historic Preservation Office. You bet. Seven's off. Anything else? Seeing none, I would entertain a resolution for the remaining eight. Don't make that, Your Honor. Thank you, Anthony. I'll second. Thank you, Justin. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 A resolution is approved. Uh, item number seven is a motion authorizing staff to submit a certified local government grant application to the Minnesota State Historic Preservation Office for the purposes of evaluating downtown as a potential historic district. Anthony? Yeah. And um, obviously, this is kind of another study, and, and I, I wonder, I know it says that obviously it, it doesn't automatically create local or national historic and that there'd be another process that we would follow on that requiring public hearings and outreach but I, I think before kind of going down this road I'd actually want to understand what the impact is actually going to be uh, property tax has gone up significantly a lot of businesses downtown and for those of us that were at the 
you know, the hearing um, talking to business owners, um, there was a lot of business owners came in and were not happy about, obviously, the valuations of their properties. Um, and if we impose some form of downtown historic register that impedes them doing things to their buildings or increases the cost of them doing something to their building, I think I would like to understand that before spending. And I know it's part of it's covered. It's a $20,000 piece. We have to come up with 6,000, 30%. It can be in kind as, as opposed to dollars, but I'm more concerned about the impact than, than necessarily the, you know, the dollars at this point. Sure. I and I think, you know, yes, I appreciate the Historic Preservation Society has done this, and Chris is a good friend of mine, but um, I'm just more concerned about the impact on, on the building owners, and I'd like to understand that more than, than I do just by reading the memo. And I think that also might be an opportunity to um, look at what opportunities there might exist for access to certain programs and stuff too. So yeah, is that uh, and that's yeah, I know that's what I would say. It's like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's more pros and cons. Yeah. But but maybe we just could you maybe bring it to a committee of the whole and yeah. with some information. There's there's no is there a yeah we can have Chris. That's yeah. A good idea. yeah, is there a there's not a timeline on on this? Well, is the it? grant is due I believe June third. Um, can so we send simple. it? Okay. Oh. We've got a meeting that on June 1st, yeah. but you won't be here. I won't be here. But I can talk to Chris then in the meantime. Yeah. And, or we uh, can put together a memo before the Committee of the Whole yeah. that can go out, and then we can also. If we can do that. that. If we acted, if, if we were to take positive action on June 1st, that would allow us time, and then you can yep. have the conversations you need before then? Okay, fair yep. enough. Thank you. Okay, we'll just. Uh, so I, that made, one. I just motion it. To, I'll make a motion to table it. Motion okay. to table until June first. I'll yeah. second that. Second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Anthony. Um, no ordinance or resolutions to act upon this evening uh, under presentation of claims tonight. We have claims in the amount of two million four hundred thirty thousand three hundred eighty dollars <laughs> and thirty nine cents. We look for resolution to pay the bills. I will offer the resolution to pay the bills. Thank you, Jim. I'll second. Krista, thank you. Questions will direct to our finance director. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution is approved. Under uh, old business this evening, unfinished business, we have two items relating to the downtown phase one parking lot. Uh, first item is the downtown riverfront phase one parking lot layout. And again, we'll call on Ken Lawaji. Thank you. So just a quick follow up on the discussion from the committee of the whole last week. Uh, we have reached out to uh, Lisa over at the Chamber of Commerce, um, asking her to kind of touch base with the business owners about how that parking lot layout is working and what the business owners think might be a, uh, an alternative if, if they would like to see it changed then to what uh, some of the initial feedback she's gotten so far is that the aisle is difficult to navigate with some of the larger vehicles um, the aisle that is currently painted out there is actually a foot wider uh, than what was painted out there previous prior to the project so what what that's telling us is that uh, the diagonal parking obviously is easier for people to navigate than the 90 degree stuff uh, for larger vehicles you're going to get uh, a handful of back and forth motions to navigate into a parking stall so uh, Lisa did say she was planning to talk some more of those folks and uh, we can bring that back to a future council meeting uh, for formal decision on that uh, as far as the curb cuts I'm sorry can I move Leslie, you're, you're moving us along that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> anyone have any questions on the layout I mean Anthony? do we need to wait as such I mean I, 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 I mean, I, th I think everybody agrees that the more herringbone style, the diagonal is easier. Mm -hmm. um, the, the variance is basically 10 stalls. Um, I, would, I would actually move that we get the project moving and, uh, and go with the diagonal parking. I would second that. Thank you, Jim. Any? And to the, and to the point last in the community whole, what the space that's available now is quite a bit less than what the diagonal would provide so i think yeah. i think that makes sense to move forward and just refresh my memory i think you said late june july is maybe when the final striping would happen right 
Get you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. We have a motion. We have a second. Scott, go ahead. I think the difference was more than 10 uh, spaces as far as that goes. Uh, I would agree that the diagonal parking is going to be more well received by people. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that we're going to be losing more than just 10 spaces. Um, and if we need to, at some point in the future, switch back to a straight alignment like what's there now to gain another 20 spaces, well, then we can do that down the line, you know, when it comes time for a restriping. But for what it's worth, there's a lot of lots in town that are straight. You know, the service food lot is straight, not Herringbone. Uh, Fleet Farm is straight. Um, you know, there's others that are Herringbone. So it's, um, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned about giving up too many spaces because we already had to give up some just building what we're building. Uh, but I think that people would appreciate it if we go with the diagonal parking to start with. And so I would go along with that, but uh, with the understanding that we didn't, you know, it's going to probably appear to be a pretty full lot, which is okay. Sure. Thanks, Scott. Any other thoughts? We have a motion to go with the herringbone and a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. All right, now moving along to the curb cut discussion. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. So uh, we've looked at that a little closer, too. Um, we feel like perhaps the best uh, solution to the curb cut situation out there, um, if, if we remove and replace some of the sidewalk and the curb uh, by the Sears loading dock, and perhaps even make that a little bit wider than the Sears loading dock would require it to be, um, then the loading dock will function a little bit better than it currently is um, from a matter of, of leveling out uh, the sidewalk with the parking lot. Uh, and if it were a little bit wider than the loading dock, then the uh, businesses on the east end of that block could also use that as a curb cut, even while the loading dock is being used. So we feel like that's a, a good solution at this point, but of course would be willing, interested to uh, hear what the council thinks on that. So is there a reason that you wouldn't, I, mean, I know there is, but I'm waiting to hear it. That you wouldn't do it on the east and the west? Would You wouldn't enlarge it on both sides so that the businesses on both sides of Sears could utilize the curb cut? Certainly could. There's there's a curb cut not too far. Yeah. Okay. From Maybe 50 from. to 100 feet west. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the answer. I've, yeah, I knew there was a reason. Yep. So are you looking for action on that to, to, I think so. to go forward with that curb cut? Does anyone have any thoughts on... Um, I think it's a good compromise. I think so too. Someone like to make the motion, I'll make it, Anthony. Uh, thank you. I'll second that, Your Honor. Thanks, Tom. Question for Kent. All, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Feels like compromise is the word of the evening, huh? Thanks, <laughs> Kent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great for us. That doesn't happen very often in the government now. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, no new business that I'm aware of uh, under announcements. Lynn, you have some announcements here for the talking about Memorial Day already. Um, garbage just pick up that week has changed, so just keep note of that. Any other announcements, Lynn? All right. With that, we're adjourned.